Hi, my name is Jackie and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I have some teas splayed out in front of me from Plum Deluxe, which could only mean one thing. Actually, it could probably mean a lot of things, but in this particular instance, it means I'm doing an unboxing today, or I guess rather a tea haul, and it's not gonna be just any ordinary tea haul. We're gonna make it into a top 10 list. I ordered 12 different teas and sampled 10 of them in a span of two days. So yeah, I've sampled almost every single blend that is sitting in front of me. But before we get into it, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and smash that subscription button so you know when I upload. We like to talk about tea here. So what prompted this order in the first place is Plum Deluxe recently released a brand new fandom blend, one that is inspired by Doctor Who, and that is their Regeneration Blend Black Tea. And I believe the flavor profile that they were building was one based on the Jamie Dodger. I have not tasted this tea, and this is gonna be a tea reserve for another day, probably one of my Fandom Friday videos, if it's as delicious as I think it's gonna be. I also took the opportunity to restock one of my favorite Plum Deluxe blends, and that is the House Blend Black Tea. This is another blend that I am not including in my top 10 list. I mentioned this blend in the Supernatural Tea Trio video that I posted a couple weeks ago. One of the teas that Plum Deluxe blended specifically for the Supernatural celebration was a blend called the Men of Letters Black Tea, and it was limited edition. You can't get it anymore. But Plum Deluxe's house blend actually has a fairly similar flavor profile. So I mentioned in that Supernatural video that if you wanted to get a sense of what Men of Letters Black tasted, like check out the house blend even if you're not a fan of uh, Supernatural. Ugh, this blend is just super delicious. It kind of gives me this vanilla marshmallow flavored black tea vibe and I I'm here for it. Let's get to the main purpose of this video which is to count down or rank all of these all of these delicious teas and find out which one is my favorite? The one that I happen to be drinking right now. Mm. Super good. Coming in at number 10 is the Garden Grove Green Tea. I actually enjoyed all of these teas. So even though Garden Grove Green Tea is coming in at number 10, I still enjoy drinking it. And also, in defense of this tea, it had a lot of things working against it. First off, I don't like flavored green tea. Second, I really don't like cherry flavored teas in general. Third, I'm skeptical about jasmine. I historically have not appreciated the ingredient. However, I have had several teas in the last several weeks or months, I guess, uh, that included jasmine that I've really appreciated, that I've really enjoyed. So I guess the ingredient is kind of growing on me. That being said, this is a cherry flavored green tea that also has jasmine. So like, <laughs> So like really, this had to have been amazing in order for it to not be a number 10. I think I was just feeling uncharacteristically optimistic about a flavored green tea. And I may have also been persuaded about the incoming springtime weather because this tea really does have springtime vibes. It is a cherry flavored floral green tea. Uh, there's both jasmine flowers in here and rose petals. And I don't, I don't think I really noticed uh, much jasmine, even though it's the second ingredient on, on the list. This was really more like cherry candy flavored green tea. I drank it all, but it's, it's not one that I would necessarily get again. Coming in at number nine is the Red Velvet Puer Tea. This is a weird one. I enjoyed drinking it but it also didn't live up to expectations. I mean, it's entirely possible that I don't have like a good concept of what red velvet cake tastes like. I mean, it's just sort of a chocolatey cake, but with that sippy cream cheese icing, right? This sort of reminded me of how the buttery shortbread herbal tea tastes, but without sort of the zippiness of, of what the buttery shortbread herbal tea tasted like. It wasn't really chocolatey. I feel like the thing that dominated it was actually the blackberry leaves. I think blackberry leaves have a very distinct flavor. I also missed the sort of zippiness of the, the, the cream cheese icing that is typically associated with a red velvet cake. While it was tasty, it didn't live up to expectations. So yeah, number nine is the red velvet puer dessert tea. Coming in at number eight is the creme brulee Earl Grey. Oh, creme brulee Grey. That's close. It's supposed to be a blend of creme brulee and Earl Grey. And this is another one, sort of like the Red Velvet Puer tea, where it doesn't quite capture what I think 
creme brulee tastes like. I was looking for something that was creamy, custardy, vanilla, but also like burnt sugar, or at least the flavor of caramel. I just got vanilla Earl Grey from this. I mean, I love a vanilla Earl Grey, and so I really enjoyed this tea, but it just didn't live up to expectations. This also had jasmine in it, and I really, I didn't taste the jasmine, and I, I don't know if I was disappointed by that or not. I actually think that like a jasmine Earl Grey would be really nice. Coming in at number seven, is the caramelized pear black tea. This is one that really grew on me as the tea cooled down. If you drink it like when it's still pretty hot, I think the flavor of the rooibos kind of dominates everything. But as the tea cools, that's sort of when this delicious, sweet, syrupy pear flavor kind of bursts through. And also, I have to say, I don't really see pear blends that often. I've tried a couple pear blends. One from David's Tea, the cranberry, the cranberry pear black tea, which is delightful. And I also had a pear flavored white tea from Adagio Teas, which was really nice. And I'm also gonna say that caramelized pear was, was also really nice. So if you're looking for like a unique flavor profile, I guess it's unique to me just because I haven't seen pear that often, caramelized pear might be for you. Coming in at number six, actually, you know what, hold on. I'm, I'm a little bit parched. Coming in at number six is the Mindful Morning Tea. And really this is just sort of a vanilla Earl Grey. It's not really reinventing the wheel. As I mentioned a couple of teas ago for the creme brulee gray tea, I like a vanilla flavored Earl Grey. That's basically what this is. It's nice. I think for like an Earl Grey, it's a little bit more brisk than I appreciate, but still can't go wrong with a classic like a vanilla Earl Grey. And now we are entering into the top five, the most delicious of these, well, already 10 delicious teas. Number five is the vanilla sugar cookie dessert tea. And let me just read you these ingredients. It's green rooibos, cinnamon chips, blackberry leaf, ginger root, fennel seeds, vanilla essence, and as usual, love and gratitude. Ugh. Oh. Man, this tea smells so good. So this blend has a subtle sweetness from that green rooibos. There is a nice creamy vanilla flavor and then like just some gentle warm spiciness from the cinnamon chips and the ginger. I don't think it tastes like a vanilla sugar cookie. To me, this tastes like a snickerdoodle. Coming in at number four is the vanilla rose dark tea. And this is a vanilla and rose infused pour tea. They're in the shape of little hearts, which I just find absolutely charming. This one was soft and sweet rose and it actually paired really well with the puer tea that Plum Deluxe used. I was kind of skeptical because puer can be kind of funky but it really was just sort of this mild earthy black tea, no astringency, just really smooth soft sweet rose. I was really delighted by it. Plum Deluxe mentions that you should save this tea for multiple steeps. I don't think that when I steeped it Western style, I, I really don't think that that second infusion did anything for me. I would be curious to see how this one, like, does it gong fu? I will, I will have to try that. I couldn't decide whether or not to put this one in like fourth place or to put it in third place. It really could have gone either way, but since I didn't have success steeping it a second time, that kind of is why it's in the fourth spot. I think for folks that are new to pour or like are intimidated by pour, this is a this is one that's worth checking out. I I really enjoyed this. I was really impressed with this. Plus their hearts. That's adorable. Coming in at number three is the strawberries and cream rose black tea. I just I love rose flavored teas. They can sometimes be hard to get right but Plum Deluxe is blending well with their with their rose flavors. This is soft and sweet rose and sort of like this like strawberry candy flavor. And then there's a subtle creaminess from the vanilla that is in this blend as well. This is like Valentine's Day in a cup, I think. Ugh, it smells good. You know what? It smells good. <laughs> And this is gonna sound weird, but it smells like strawberry lip smackers. Like, if you're a 90s kid or, or a girl growing up in the 90s, I you probably know what I'm talking about. That sort of like artificial candied strawberry flavor. And like, the chapstick was terrible. You'd put it on and it was just like so sweet and delicious that you probably would just look it off and then like you just keep reapplying it throughout the day. Or I don't know, is that just me? Am I, is that just, 
Was that just me being weird again? <laughs> I don't know. I loved lip smackers. I would get them every Christmas. Like you would get like the gigantic like 40 variety pack where you had like Dr. Pepper flavored and like pina colada and strawberry, like the strawberry lip smackers or like the Dr. Pepper lip smackers were my favorite. Anyways, I digress. Strawberries and cream rose black tea was delicious. Could you imagine if this was like a lip smackers blend? That would be amazing. Coming in at number two, is the raspberry cocoa truffle tea. And this is a blend of poor tea, black tea, raspberries, orange peel, cocoa nibs, raspberry leaves, cornflowers, and raspberry essence. And does that not sound delicious? Oh my goodness. This, out of all of the teas, this is probably the one that I was most, that I was the most excited for. There is an earthiness to it because not only is it a poor base, but there is also like chocolate notes in it. And I guess, I guess, to me, chocolate can sometimes read kind of earthy, but then there is just this sweet and tart uh, scent of raspberry that just like cuts through the earthiness. This is actually the first tea that I tried from this order and I made a cup for myself and I made a cup for John and like the first cup we were sort of like not that impressed with and and then I added a little bit of sugar and, and we were both like, oh, this is good. This is a lot better than, than, than that first cup. And then I added, I added a little bit of milk and we're like, oh man, this is decadent. This is a beautifully delicious dessert blend. Like this is, this is like the dessert blend that like wins my heart. I think the thing that like really excites me about this blend is that it, it lives up to its name. Like a truffle to me is sort of this dark and dense fudgy little bonbon and it definitely captures those more bittersweet cocoa notes in here. And then you just have that sweet and tart raspberry flavor that just like pops. Oh my gosh. I mean, I also have to say that like chocolate raspberry, that's like one of my favorite candy combinations. So like, I kind of feel like this dessert blend was made for me. I would say that the only reason why this is not in the number one spot is because it's not one that I would ever drink without milk and sugar, which I don't know, is that petty? And coming in at the number one spot, here, let me just take a swig of it. Coming in at the number one spot is the Gratitude Blend Black Tea. This is kind of a simple blend. It's really a strawberry flavored Earl Grey. It is a blend of black tea, orange peels, blue cornflowers, strawberries, raspberry leaves, bergamot oil, and strawberry essence. This just like ticks a whole bunch of boxes for me. One, it's an Earl Grey. I love an Earl Grey. Two, it's sort of like a fun play on Earl Grey. It's Earl Grey with a little extra oomph. And three, it's a simple fruit flavored black tea. Sometimes it's simplicity that like speaks to me the most. There's not a whole lot going on. It's not trying to mimic a dessert. It's just a simple strawberry flavored Earl Grey blend. It tastes delicious plain. It tastes delicious sweetened. The strawberry aspect of it, it doesn't taste like real strawberries. It tastes like candy strawberry or like like a hard candy strawberry or like, again, like that, that strawberry lip smacker, artificial strawberry flavor. I could see how perhaps that might be unappealing to some folk, but I just, I love it. I think that the fruity candy strawberry flavor pairs really well with the bergamot. I love it. I don't know what else to say other than it ticks all the boxes for me. So there we have it. My plum deluxe haul, but turned into a top 10 list. If you're a Plum Deluxe fan, let me know, have you tried any of these blends that I showcased today? And if you have, let me know which ones are your favorite. And um, I'm curious to know if there are any other fans of the Gratitude Blend Black Tea. I feel like this one is sort of a Plum Deluxe classic almost. <clears throat> it's just a darn good tea. And that's what I have been sipping this entire episode. That's really weird, I call it an episode. It's, that's weird to think of it as an episode. That's what I've been sipping this entire video. Speaking of this video, if you happen to have enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.